Hello and welcome to lecture 5 in thermochemistry, Hess's Law. Here we have uh, Alberta Learning's knowledge outcomes. Hopefully you're keeping track of your progress in mastering this material. These knowledge outcomes form the basis, of course, for the bulk of diploma questions that you'll see. Um, quite often um, it's inconvenient to run a calorimeter experiment in the lab. Reagents might not be available or could be expensive or dangerous and you might simply not have the time. <clears throat> Excuse me. To, to avoid having doing so, we apply a principle known as Hess's law. Um, we can use this law to determine the enthalpy of a, a reaction that we're, we're not familiar with by adding together other reactions that uh, essentially add up to the, the reaction we're looking at. Um, we're able to do so because uh, enthalpy is what's known as a state function. Um, what makes a state function? Well, a good analogy is altitude. You know, you can scale a mountain and, and arrive at a ledge halfway up the mountain and be met by a parachuter who drops down to the same ledge. You share the same altitude, you share the same state, but you took very different paths to get there. And this is characteristic of a state function. It's independent of the path it took to arrive there. Uh, perhaps a more tangible example is that of energy. Energy is also a state function. If you take a glass of water and it comes out of the tap at 10 degrees Celsius, well, whether you heat it over the stove or you drink it and let it warm in your stomach, the water will absorb the same amount of energy uh, in both cases as it increases to body temperature. Um, and that's the point we're making here. Energy is a state function. And we apply this principle to determine enthalpy change for a chemical reaction. As long as we start with the same reactants and end with the same products, the enthalpy change will be the same, regardless of how we get from reactants to products. And in fact, we, we give you the definition right here, the formal definition of a, a state function. The enthalpy change of a chemical reaction is the same as it goes from reactants to products, regardless of the chemical path taken. So to solve Hess's law of problems, we're given a target equation uh, that we don't know the enthalpy change for. And we're given a system of equations that we, we have known enthalpies for. They've been tabulated. We run these experiments under standard conditions, which allows us to tabulate them. And then what we do is we manipulate the, that system of equations until it adds up to the target equation. Um, once it, they finally do, we add up their enthalpies, and that becomes the enthalpy... Um, of the target. So here's an example. We're looking at ethene reacting with fluorine to produce uh, tetrafluoromethane and hydrogen fluoride. And we don't know the enthalpy for it, but we do have a short system of equations here that we can manipulate to, to add up to the target. Um, the first thing I would do is I would, uh, I like dealing with these things backwards. They always seem to work out better when you start from the right and work to the left. So I'm going to deal with this hydrogen fluoride. And um, you'll see that the target equation has got four moles of hydrogen fluoride. And the only source of hydrogen fluoride in our system of equations is equation one, but that it's only producing two moles of hydrogen fluoride. So the first thing I want to do is to multiply equation one by two, double equation one. And now you'll see equation one is generating four moles of hydrogen fluoride. Um, you'll notice that in doubling the equation, I've also doubled the enthalpy, right? We're generating twice the hydrogen fluoride, so we're going to release twice the enthalpy. And intuitively, I hope that makes sense. Our second manipulation then, we've got this CF4. And the only source of CF4 is equation 2 in the system of equations. But again, the target generates 2 moles of CF4, and this equation 2 only generates 1. So equation 2 is going to have to be doubled as well. And that's our next manipulation of the system. You see we've doubled it, and again, we've doubled the enthalpy. So we've doubled it to produce two moles of CF4, and we've doubled the enthalpy being released. I'm going to avoid the F2, and the reason I'm avoiding the F2 in the target is because you'll see there's two sources of F2, one in the first equation, one in the second equation. So you're not really sure which combination of those two equations is going to supply the target. Whenever you have two sources, two or more sources of any reagent, just skip over that reagent and work on the next one. And in this case, the next one is C2H4. 
The C2H4 only has one, excuse me, the mouse is acting up, only has one source, and that's from equation 3. You'll see in the target equation it goes in as a reactant, but in equation 3 it comes out as a product. So you want to reverse equ equation 3, uh, call, you want to flip it. And that's what we've done here. We brought the C2H4 over as the reactant, and we brought uh, what were the reactants over as the products. And when you flip an equation, you see that the sign of the enthalpy changes. And we've seen this before. Uh, if a formation reaction releases energy, then a decomposition absorbs energy because they're uh, the reverse of one another. So those are our three manipulations. Let's look at our target and our system of equations now all on the same page. So here's our target and here's our manipulated system of equations. You'll see that a great many things cancel out. And in fact, everything that doesn't go into the target should cancel out as a reactant on one side and a product on the other. So the hydrogen cancels out and the carbon cancels out. And what we have left is our target equation. So we add up the chemical reagents and we add up the enthalpies and the, we have the enthalpy for the target equation. Negative 2505.6 kilojoules. So the reaction is highly exothermic. Uh, more recently on the diploma, they're asking you questions of this sort. They give you a target, they give you a system of equations, and they ask you, they don't ask you to manipulate the equations, they ask you how you would manipulate the equations. So those are the four choices here. Let's see if we can narrow down these choices and solve the answer. You see that the C6H6 is only supplied by equation one, and that the target consumes one mole, and so does equation one. So you want to leave equation 1 alone. Immediately we can eliminate choice A and choice D. If, um, choice B and C are left, and you'll notice that choice B and C both do the same thing with equation 2. They both ask you to flip equation 2. So there's really no choice there. What we have to look at is equation 3. Do we want to multiply equation 3 by 3 or multiply equation 3 by 6? So here's equation 3. And you'll notice that it's the only supplier for the hydrogen, the H2. In the target, three moles of hydrogen are consumed. And in equation three, one mole of hydrogen is consumed. So clearly, equation three has to be multiplied by three. And that makes choice B the correct answer. I've got one more example before I close up the lecture. It's quite a complicated example. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to post the target. <coughs> Excuse me. Post the system of equations and perhaps give you a minute to work at it. Um, I'll do the first couple of manipulations and leave the rest for you to solve. And again, I want to start at the right hand side here. These fractional coefficients on the left sort of concern me. Um, perhaps a little too complex to start with initially. Um, but the HNO2 only has one source in the system of equations, and that's equation number two. You'll see in the target equation, it's the product, but in equation two, it's a reactant. So we want to flip equation two. You flip an equation, and of course, the enthalpy sign reverses. So negative 37.7 becomes positive 37.7. Now, believe it or not, I actually want to deal with this ammonia that's not in the target equation, but it's in this manipulated equation. I want to deal with it by getting rid of it, because uh, in point of fact, there is no ammonia in the target equation. So I need to manipulate one of the other equations to eliminate this ammonia. The only other place that ammonia shows up is equation 3, and you'll see equation 3 consumes 2 moles of ammonia. Now, I'm only obligated to eliminate one mole of ammonia, so equation 3 must be divided by 2, like this. We divide equation 3 by 2, and you'll see that the ammonia will now cancel out as a reactant and a product when we add up the system of equations. We divide the equation by 2, of course, and we have to divide the enthalpy by 2. Positive 169.9 becomes positive 84.95. Um, some of the fractional coefficients now are becoming pretty ugly. You'll see that by dividing that equation by 2, we've got a mole and a half of hydrogen coming out. <clears throat> Plus, the target consumes a half a mole of hydrogen. So, I'm going to have to manipulate uh, equation 4 
to eliminate both that half hydrogen going into the target and the uh, mole and a half of hydrogen coming out of the uh, previously manipulated equation. That's going to require me to double equation four. And you'll see that that's what I've done in the next equation. We're going to lose our system of equations, but um, hopefully you'll be able to follow along. Yeah, so we double equation four, and that gives us two moles of hydrogen. Those two moles, they supply the half mole of hydrogen going into the target, and they cancel out the mole and a half of hydrogen in the previously manipulated equation. And then finally, we've got this... Uh, the, this water which doesn't appear in the target equation and we need to cancel that out and we do so and I'm not going to scroll back to equation one we do so by uh, reversing equation one in the system of equations now we have two moles of water coming out and two moles of water going in and um, we um, have reversed the sign of the enthalpy change because we reversed the equations so then here's our target Here's our manipulated system of equations. You'll see everything else that's not part of the target cancels out nicely. So the H, so the, the NH4, NO2 cancels out reactants and products. The ammonia cancels out reactants and products. So does half the nitrogen and most of the hydrogen and the water. And we're left with our target equation and its change in enthalpy. Um, I'll refer you to any homework that your teacher will sign in this area, and I'll see you next time when we talk about thermal stability and formation uh, enthalpies. Thank you.